what's up youtube family i'm back with another video today we're gonna deal with a hot topic literally <laughs> we're gonna talk about heat damage all right if you're not already subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below make sure you like and share this video comment ask questions i love to engage with you guys but without further ado let's get into it all right so a little backstory this is a previous guest of mine um, i haven't seen her in about two years if you don't know, I'm originally from New Jersey. I was I had a established a clientele base there and I transitioned over to Chicago about two and a half years ago. In the process, um, I haven't seen some of my New Jersey guests. They managed to catch me on my trips back there, but I haven't seen this particular guest in about two years. Now, funny story, when I first started doing her a few years ago, I actually transitioned her out of previous heat damage and we got the hair nice and full and healthy, but I've been gone for two years. She had to go somewhere else and had to do what she had to do and lo and behold we're back where we started but it's all good we're gonna get it right okay so a little history about the hair or a little bit of hair uh doctrine if you want to call it hair is made of keratin fiber if you didn't know uh, and there's three bonds that make it up hydrogen salt or ionic bonds and disulfide bonds most of the time we always deal with that disulfide bond we hear about it with relaxers with treatments like olaplex but we, we forget about the other two anytime you wet the hair you are altering that hydrogen bond it breaks down and it resets um, once the hair is wet or comes in contact with humidity again this is what gives the hair its flexibility of style that hydrogen bond is so important i know we focus on that disulfide bond but the hydrogen bond is just as important okay guys it gives the hair its flexibility and its versatility when it comes to style the reason your hair reverts back when it gets wet is because the hydrogen bond is being broken and re-established it always goes back into the same place now that salt bond is only broken by chemicals similar to the disulfide bond now the disulfide bond is what gives the hair its memory okay so over time with heat styling at these high temperatures that we use with flat irons and blow dryers it does have the ability to compromise that disulfide bond now each of these bonds makes up 33 percent of the hair structure 33 percent or one third okay everybody following along if you need to take notes go ahead and get your notepad out it's gonna be good disulfide bonds when you're dealing with heat damage that bond has been broken once you break a disulfide bond it restructures itself in a new shape it cannot return back to its original shape okay so there is no magic wand for heat damage i'm a firm avid user of uh olaplex Brazilian Bond Builder, all these other treatments, they're great to maintain the integrity of the hair, but they cannot reverse heat damage or any other chemical damage once that bond has been broken, okay? So you have to transition it out. Now, just because the hair is, the curl has been elongated or stretched out does not mean the hair is quote unquote unhealthy. Now, it's not, it's not in its original state, but it can still last. You just have to transition it out. So you have to be gentle, your techniques have to change, you have to be mindful of it and be mindful of the heat you're using. So Trav, how do I avoid heat damage? Number one, turn the iron down, period, point blank. Turn the iron down. Um, I have seen in the last 11 years of my journey as a hairstylist, flat irons have gotten so advanced, you know, between different metals and ceramics. Um, but the one danger I've seen with all of them is these extreme high temperatures. Flat, I've seen flat irons that go up to 470 degrees now guys it's not necessary you don't need that kind of heat to straighten the hair the hair is malleable it's pliable with the right conditioning with the right shampooing and moisturizing you can stretch the hair out without using that kind of heat the cuticle of the hair burns at 451 degrees fahrenheit again that's 451 degrees fahrenheit so if you're using 450 without proper heat protectant nine times out of ten eventually if it's not the first time second time maybe the third time but eventually that disulfide bond is going to shift and stretch out and you're gonna get curl elongation, okay? Now I mentioned in one of my previous videos about Career Naturals. Those are guests that wear their hair straight 95% of the time. With those guests, it's not unusual to see some type of curl elongation, but that has to be explained in the consultation. And usually the guests, because they wear their hair straight most of the time, they're not concerned, but explain it because heat damage gets very serious. Um, you'll start to notice the hair start to alter and start to lose its integrity, and that's not good. It's, it gets more serious when you start to notice the hair shedding, long strands of hair, you get extreme breakage, and overall the hair starts to look dull. You probably noticed during my blow drying process, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to the ends of her hair, I kind of just brushed through it. I didn't do my normal sec sectioning because the ends are already straight. And you'll notice while I'm pressing, my focus is on 
the roots and the top of that mid shaft i'm avoiding the end as much as possible in one stroke okay it just doesn't need the heat anymore it's been stretched out now you can maintain the length of the hair over time and just trim it out but if the hair has been dried out or broken to the point where it can no longer retain moisture or that cuticle layer has been fried off pretty much you're going to have to cut the hair because it's not going to maintain a style shape um, it's not going to uh, keep its vitality. It's going to break off eventually. Okay, it's just like a relaxer So you have to be mindful of that Another thing you want to do is make sure that you're taking proper steps at that shampoo bowl I mentioned in my previous video that the shampoo bowl is the foundation of the service Okay, how you shampoo how you condition all that matters if you're taking shortcuts If you're not hydrating the hair if you're not strengthening it or not paying attention to the client's hair you're going to experience some type of mechanical damage or heat damage okay very important all right so at that bowl treat every guest like it's a different head of hair analyze the texture see what it needs and hair talks y'all it's going to tell you what it does or doesn't want to do and it's going to tell you what state it's in if you notice that the curl is not responding the right way it's more than just about having a tight curl pattern it's about elasticity it's about tensile strength once the hair loses its ability to shrink that should let you know that it's lost elasticity you have to change the pressure of the iron the heat of the iron all that matters and quite frankly i know people may disagree and we have varying um varying methods when it comes to blow drying for me the blow dry is the foundation of a silk press okay after that shampoo bowl the blow dry matters it has to be smooth so that when i go in with the iron i'm just smoothing the hair out i should not be pressing over pressing you know gripping that hair trying to get it straight if it ain't gonna work it ain't gonna work another point i say to many styles and my guests sometimes too everyone's hair does not straighten the same it's highly dependent on texture type 4 hair does not always straighten like type 2 and just because it's silky does not mean it's right okay everybody's hair does not silk out the same so approach it differently it matters in the long run you don't want to stress the client's hair out and end up with heat damage okay so trav next question what are the symptoms of heat damage well number one when you get back to the bowl and you wash your hair if you notice the hair is not shrinking up like it should if you have extreme curly elongation um, different patterns other than the ones that are naturally there you have really elongated waves towards the ends and then the roots are shrunken that's a symptom of heat damage or the curls been elongated and that the sulfide bond has been broken okay now when it comes to treatments like olaplex brazilian bond builders any bond builder what they're going to do is create a temporary bridge hear me a temporary bridge in that disulfide bond they are not miracle workers okay we have to remember hair is a non-living keratin fiber once it leaves the scalp so no matter what the product says repair restore strengthen it cannot fix it okay it has to be cut the bonders go in, they create bridges and bonds in those, in those uh, keratin bonds, but they cannot fix or undo what that flat iron has done, okay? So it's very important, pay attention to those temperatures. Pay attention to even how you press the hair. Let the iron do the work, don't over press it, putting all your force on it, you're stretching and elongating that curl, okay? You can get a silk press without losing the curl pattern, okay? Very important. So Trav, how do I recover from heat damage? Well, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to grow it out and transition it and maintain your length, you're going to trim probably every six to eight weeks. That's about the only time I follow that rule because at that point, we're trying to get the hair back to its original state, okay? So you're going to trim regularly and also avoid all heat aside from your original styling. So during the week, you should not be putting heat on your hair. Um, that's another side point because I get asked that frequently. How, how often should I put heat on my hair? Really when you style it. After the hair starts to revert, it's letting you know that it no longer wants to be straight or it lacks a level of style memory to maintain the shape. It's trying to revert back to its state, its natural state. Just let it do its thing, okay? Don't put heat on it. And what you're doing also is you're burning into the hair those natural oils. And oil at high temperatures, what does it do? It fries. <laughs> so you're literally frying the cuticle. Sidebar, speaking of the cuticle, texture hair um, inherently has fewer cuticle layers as you, as you move up the texture type uh, scale. So type one hair probably has a few more cuticle layers than type four. So it has a little bit more of a buffer against the elements, heat, chemicals, 
um, all that kind of stuff so it doesn't mean that texture hair type 4 hair can't do what type 1 hair because that's not true at all it can do everything that type 1 can it just means that you have to take proper care and acknowledge the fact that it has fewer cuticle fewer cuticle layers than uh, texture type 1 2 or 3 so you want to be careful on how you approach it um, be gentle with it and again texture type 4 although it's it looks like a lot guys it's the most fragile hair type you don't want to put a lot of pressure force tension a whole lot of brushing combing heat any of that on the hair without properly maintaining it okay so um a little bit more about texture types um as i get more into my texture series i'll talk about it some more but i i follow texture types for the sense of product recommendation and giving my clients a framework but to be clear everyone does not fit on this chart okay and even on one head of head you may have five different curl types or different textures of hair that's perfectly okay and that's perfectly normal you may have tighter curls in the back and looser ones in the front or looser on one side and a coil on the other side it's normal it's hair there's no there is no exact science to it there's no exact formula it's all genetics it's how your hair grows all right so don't lock yourself into that chart but i'll deal with that some more but it's good to know that when you're dealing with heat and knowing what the hair can handle and what it can this particular client i'm um, sorry this particular client her hair is um tightly coiled but it's really soft she has a high density but her hair is very soft it's easy to approach it because of its density. You think you need a lot of force, a lot of heat. Um, it needs to be flat on excessively, it needs a high temperature. That couldn't be further from the truth. With fine hair, with high density, take smaller sections and turn the iron down. Turn the iron down. Type that in the chat or in the comments. Um, send me a message, whatever, but I need you to get that. Turn the iron <laughs> down. It's so important, guys. Um, these irons are made to function at high temperatures and function well. When flat irons first came out, they had um, very low quality heaters. So when you made that initial pass on the hair, the iron will cool down anywhere between 50 and 100 degrees. So they made them at 450 so that by the time I hit the hair and pass, I was hitting at 400 to make sure that the hair would get straight. Well, now we have digital heaters in them, ceramic heaters. They maintain their temperature the entire time they're working. From the time the iron hits that hair all the way down, it's going to maintain its temperature, okay? So if it says 450, that joker is at 450. Now, back in the day when we were pressing with pressing combs and Marcel's, we were using heavy, heavy heat protectants and grease and pressing creams on the hair to make sure, number one, the hair could get straight but also to protect it and create a barrier between the iron and the hair. We no longer use those heavy uh, heat protectants. We like soft emollients, things that leave soft surfaces on the hair so the hair is movable, that it's styleable, and that it lasts. With that, we can no longer use those same high temperatures um, to get the same result, okay? We gotta turn it down. Now, most heat protectants um, today, they usually guarantee heat protection up to 450 degrees. But again, all products have a, have, a, uh, have a surface life. So after that first pass of the iron, yes, the hair is protected, but we burned that first layer of product off. So when you keep going with the iron over and over and over again, you have now burned that layer of protection off and it's just iron to hair, iron to hair. And eventually you're going to have some type of heat damage, okay? Very important. Make sure you're using heat protecting at every stage of your styling process. Um, you can look into your leave-in conditioners and make sure they have, um, you know, an agent that protects against heat. Also look for um, ingredients like hydrolyzed wheat proteins. They tend to build up the hair shaft and add extra layers of protection and make sure that your oils are... Um, I'll do another video on silicones because there's a whole lot of uh, <laughs> lingo going around. You know, silicones are bad, parabens are bad, sulfates are bad. That's a whole other conversation for another video. And from a stylist perspective and from a chemistry perspective, I can give you what they really mean and what's really going on. But make sure your uh, make sure your heat protectors have high quality ingredients. Okay, you get what you pay for when it comes to products. If you're buying it from Walmart and Sidebar, I know I'm gonna get some some blowback. I don't care. If I'm paying money to sit in a stylish chair, I don't want to see products from Walmart on the shelf or behind me. I want to know they're using high quality, professional, concentrated products that are designed to last and hold up and offer the proper protection, okay? You can't use run of the mill products and expect to get high quality results. You can get run of the mill results and eventually you're going to get heat damage, okay? So important. And also educate your guests on at home care. We don't have to apply heat if we are properly wrapping it at night, protecting it. Um, and making sure that the hair is sealed, shiny, and it's gonna be long lasting, okay? 
so important and you can see her hair here is back to health i did trim it um but the whole uh pressing process one pass of the iron and one pass just to bump the ends and i turn my my irons down when i go to bump i don't need high heat i'm not trying to straighten the hair anymore the hair is straight i'm just trying to add shape you can add straight shape with uh low temperatures her hair looks great even though we still have you know it's about 50 percent that's of that heat damage still left the hair is not integral we're going to monitor it um, over the next few months to a year and eventually transition it out and she's still going to wear her hair straight she likes to wear her hair straight but it's going to be in its, its best possible healthy state with Without the risk of breakage without the risk of any further damage okay if you haven't done so already hit that subscribe button i'll see y'all later